Hello. I do not have a working title for this, so I'm going to have to come up with something. But this is essentially the doctors have told you you probably need radiation therapy. What's next? What to expect? Um, even though I've been experiencing different forms of cancer for the last 19 years, this is my first time where doctors told me, we think you're going to need radiation. And then there was a little bit of delay. And then there were some more delays, but what I wanted to share with you is kind of what to expect to start. Now, I haven't started radiation yet. I think that's going to start in the next week or two, um, but I figured maybe it would be helpful for someone like myself that just wanted to be a little educated from a layman's perspective. So when I went to my um, consultation, I got a little booklet, Radiation Therapy and You, Support for People with Cancer from NIH National Cancer Institute. I also, I think, I don't know where that paper is. They also gave me a, a piece of paper that said, you know, if you Google, which everyone does, please only believe information that comes from these sites. So they gave me a list of um, websites that they recommended as far as, sorry, let's get organized down. Oh, here we go. Patient education websites. So they re recommended cancer.gov, nccn.org, which is the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, um, ASTRO, the American Society of Radiation Oncology, um, cancer.org, American Cancer Society, and the American Society of Clinical Oncology, asco.org. Those were the ones they recommended um, as far as believing what you read. And then I probably have a few more on top of that. You know, obviously, NCI, NIH, um, some of the bigger clinics, so like Mayo, Cleveland, um, uh, what's the one here in New York? Uh, it'll come to me. Maybe I'll, I'll mention it later. So I tend, I already kind of have a list in my head. They gave me a few extras. There's some of those I didn't, I didn't know myself, but it's good to know. Um, so that's one thing to think about if you're going to start looking. Um, another thing to know, uh, and they were very clear to, to point that out to me in this little booklet, is that your symptoms are predicated or dictated by what area of your body is being radiated. So you will you will get different symptoms depending on where your um, where you're being radiated. So as you all may or may not know, my radiation will be in chest. My, actually, my whole chest wall on the right side. <coughs> And so my set of symptoms are a little different than, you know, say if you had a GI, you know, abdomen or brain or spine, like all those areas, you're going to get different set of symptoms. So I'm going to just talk about the ones I know about for me, but kind of predicating, the, um, pre preparing you, um, you know, if you know what area your radiation is going to be in and you can go to one of those sites I mentioned, then that would help as far as, um, you know, drilling down into what the symptoms are. Now, the consultation kind of went like this. This is, uh, we think you need to get the radiation. This is why, although I think I shared in some other videos that my, my reason why was a little wiggly, but they basically were saying, we can't give you any concrete numbers of why, but we feel that it's the right thing to do for your particular case and you'll have the best outcome if you do it. And I have three doctors telling me that, and so three different doctors. And so myself and my family have decided to move forward with it, despite the fact that I don't have any concrete data. Um, and then they told me about some of the symptoms and also some of the short and long-term side effects. So let me share those with you. And again, this was just for my case or any case with the chest wall, but it won't be everyone's symptoms. So um, when you look at this booklet and the symptoms specific to um, chest or breast, uh, the main ones have to do with skin changes because you're basically burning that area. You're getting a sunburn, a really bad sunburn, right? It's radiation, so it's a, it's a burn. Um, fatigue, because your body's trying to repair the damage from that radiation. And um, hair loss. So in this case, I'm gonna it's gonna go to the armpit. So if there is still hair there, which you can see, I don't have a whole lot of hair, but if there is hair growing there now, it might be removed, either for the short or long term. Unclear. Um, that's not the end of the world for me if I have one armpit that doesn't get hair. <laughs> oh well. Uh, but I could see where if you were getting like brain or someplace else on your body, you might not, you might feel a little differently about losing your hair, temporarily or permanently. So 
that's something to consider. Um, so those are the kind of the immediate symptoms. And then there were a set of longer term symptoms related to breast or chest. And let me share those with you. Um, some were more concerning than others. So the radiation has to go through the chest wall. And because our bodies are curved, that means that under the chest wall, some of the tissues and materials under the chest wall will be impacted by the radiation. So um, the, for, the two most uh, significant ones are the ribs. So because the ribs are obviously behind your chest wall, they're going to get radiated and they'll be more susceptible to break. So if I were to take a spill, then the ribs on this side would be, I would more likely to break those ribs. Um, the second thing, again, kind of common sense, but it was good to have it spelled out for me, was that your lung, a small part of your lung will be included in the radiation. Again, because of that curve, they're trying to get the stuff that's on top, but because it's curved and the radiation is a straight line, it's going to some of it's going to go through that bottom part. And, um, the impact to the lung could be very minimal from the perspective of it's just uh, a little aggravated and that's the end of it. But you could also have like a reaction. Like, oh, I guess I shouldn't say that. It could be the same as the impact to your skin, like some thickening or changing in the texture like that because it is getting radiated. Um, the issue for the lung that's more significant, perhaps, is that your body could um, kind of have a like um, an itis flare up recognize that the tissue is not right and get your lungs inflamed, in which case it would feel like a pneumonia or some other um, respiratory issue because you wouldn't be able to expand your lungs and it would feel all, uh, it would react as though there was an inflammation, which there is. And um, there would have to be some additional research done uh, by the, the medical team to figure out, is it there uh, a virus or a germ or is this a reaction to the radiation and how to treat it? So, you know, and that could have, um, they said that would happen six months and beyond from when the treatment took place. So you could be feeling fine and then something could just happen to trigger it. Or maybe just a cold like I have right now is enough to trigger this other section of the lungs that's, you know, whatever. So that that's something a bit of a concern, but it's good to know and be able to share with the doctors if you have any issues or concerns. So moving forward, we can stay on top of that. So that's, um, that was the consultation. And then it was presented to me. It was very interesting, not unlike my medical oncologist. Um, this is what we think you need to do. We're moving forward, but I'll wait for you to give me the go ahead, essentially. <laughs> like we won't schedule the next step until you say we're ready to move forward. But it was kind of presented. So it was kind of, yeah, you get to be the driver's seat, but you better drive here. That was kind of the, the message I got. I don't know if I interpreted it incorrectly or not, but that's how I read it. So um, let me tell you a little bit about the intake. So the next step, which I've already kind of done, but got got halted, which is we have, um, I forget what they called it. It had a name. Oh, here we go. The simulation slash CAT scan appointment. So I went in um, and they do like a CAT scan because they need to know your exact physiology, where you're ribs are, how your chest wall turns and all those things. And from that, they uh, pop that into a computer, I suspect, with a little help from a radiation oncologist. And they figure out how to shoot the radiation beams to uh, impact the area that needs to be impacted without damaging the other tissues as much as possible. So they're, they're trying to figure out how to get that straight line to get around that curve with as minimal damage in the places you don't want it. And they do that with that picture. And then additionally, I've mentioned a couple times, but there were some questions, so I wanted to clear them up. Um, once they've done that, they also put uh, what they call tattoos. And I haven't done the tattoo part yet because we have to go, I think, because I have to go back again. But um, I, for me, I think the tattoos were going to go kind of under my armpits, down like on my chest wall down here, and then maybe right here in the center. And th think of these kind of as, um, they're like pinpoints. It looked like the, the device she was going to use was kind of like a diabetes lancet, if that makes sense. But it probably had some uh, ink in there. 
but it's like one poke i think it's only gonna be like one poke it's very teeny like the tip of a ballpoint pen she said was the ta the tattoo but it has to be permanent and the reason it's permanent is because they use these three locations every time i lay down on the table i have to go once every day monday through friday for six weeks and every day because of the because they want to make sure those um radiation beams are going exactly where they want them to go. They're using those three points as points of triangulation. So they lay you down on the table, they get the mold in the position, and you have to stay perfectly still for the time that the radiation goes through your body. But those, by using those three dots that can't come off because they're tattoos, um, they make sure that you're in the exact same position every time you lay down on the table. Not even a little bit off because that makes sure that the treatment goes exactly where it needs to go. So the intake is essentially, um, I think I've just described it. You get the CT, the doctors look at the results, make sure there's no, no, um, no concerns. This last time I did it, there was a concern. I have a port here that was blocking one of the lymph nodes they needed to get to. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to remove this uh, port. And then a couple of days later, I'm going to go get that CT scan and the tattoos again. And then after that, they take a couple days uh, between the doctors and the computers to figure out exactly how to radiate you. And then, and then assuming there are no other obstacles, your radiation would start. Um, again, I'm told that from a symptoms perspective, it's supposed to be much more manageable than chemo, that I won't have the symptoms, you know, the nausea and the other issues. Um, when I read through the, you know, of course, being, me being me, I read through the book and I read through the symptoms for other types of um, radiation and certainly radiations to the abdomen, the pelvic, even the spine did impact nausea and, and all that kind of stuff. But because I'm in the chest area, they don't think it's going to be an issue. So that is what we know right now. I hope this was helpful um, to kind of set the stage for what to expect. And um Maybe I'll try and do weekly or bi-weekly videos once the radiation starts to share the symptoms I'm experiencing and just bring you along on that ride for those who are interested in the radiation symptomology or what's happening. Um, let me know if there's anything else I can answer. I'm happy to do so. Um, I think that I answered all the questions about that first little bit, the consultation and then the intake. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that was it. So thanks for coming along today. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. Be well.